bundle branch block. As we all know before, the electrical stimulus reaches the ventricles via the AV junction. The first part to be depolarized from the ventricular mass is the left side of the septum, of the interventricular septum. Then the stimulus will spread to all parts of the ventricular mass. This process does not take more than 0.10 of a second. That is why the QRS complex duration normally shouldn't be more than 0.10 of a second or 2.5 small squares in width. Any delay in conduction within the ventricles within the bundle branches logically will cause prolongation of the QRS complex. From 2.5 small squares to less than 3 small squares it will be called incomplete bundle branch block. If it is more than 3 small squares in width it will be complete bundle branch block. Right bundle branch block. When we find a wide QRS complex more than 2.5 small squares and then we should look to V1 and V2 in one hand and V5 and V6 in the other hand. Right bundle branch block is diagnosed by finding a characteristic RSR pattern in V1 and V2, tall R wave in V1 and V2 as we will see later, inverted T waves in V1 and V2 and deep S waves in V6 and V5. We will know later on that inverted T's will be affecting the affected side. So on right bundle branch block, the inverted T waves will be affecting the V1 and V2 which are the right precordial leads. So on right bundle, right precordial leads will have inverted T waves. In left bundle branch block, again, we have to have a wide QRS complex. So the patterns alone, which is RSR pattern, or M shape as we will see later in left bundle branch block without a wide QRS complex don't mean that patient has bundle branch block so we have to have first a wide QRS complex this is an indication of prolongation of the conducting time inside the ventricles then we will look to V1 and V2 in one hand then V5 and V6 on the other hand in left bundle branch block we will find a wide deep S wave in V1 and V2 M shape in V5 and V6 and, and inverted T waves in V5 and V6 may be found. Again, as we said, the RSR butter, which is in right bundle branch block, and the M shape, which is in left bundle branch block, without a wide QRS complex, do not signify bundle branch block. We have an example here. This patient has a wide QRS complex. So this patient will have bundle branch block. Of course, there is a differential diagnosis of white QRS complex, but now we will concentrate on bundle branch block. So this patient has bundle branch block. Right or left, as we said, we will leave V1 and V2, and then V5 and V6. V1 and V2 here sh are showing tall R waves, and then R, S, R pattern, and inverted T waves in the right recorder leads and sagging S wave in V5 and V6. These are the criteria of right bundle branch block. Here is another example. We have a wide QRS complex, very clear in this example. So this patient has bundle branch block. Right or left, again, V1 and V2 and V5 and V6. V1 and V2 here are having a deep S wave, Y deep S wave, T's are upright, and in V5 and V6, the M shape with inverted T waves in the left precordial leads, which are V5 and V6. So this patient will have left bundle branch block. Clinical significance of bundle branch block. In right bundle branch block, it can be a normal variant, ASD with left to right shunt, chronic pulmonary diseases like COPD or interstitial fibrosis, pulmonary hypertension, pulmonary stenosis, degenerative disease of the conducting system, senile, I mean, acute and chronic coronary syndromes can cause right bundle branch block. Acute right bundle branch block can happen, acute pulmonary embolism, 
in tachycardia-related or rate-related bundle branch block in patients with anterior wall MI, if they develop a right bundle branch block, this may be an indication that the patient may progress to complete heart block. This is, of course, bad prognosis. Right bundle branch block may be transient or permanent. Left bundle branch block, LVH, acute and chronic coronary syndromes, as in right bundle, hypertensive heart disease, cardiomyopathies like Hocum, and also dilated cardiomyopathy is a common cause of left bundle branch block, valvular lesions like aortic stenosis, aortic regurgitation, mitral calcification, degenerative disease of the conducting system, or also rate related. Recent left bundle branch block, especially when associated with a typical ischemic chest pain of MI with bone duration, it will be considered as recent MI, like anterior MI with proximal LAD occlusion, left ear descending artery, and this will be an indication of acute intervention, either by BCI, primary BCI, or by thrombolytic therapy. When the left bundle branch block is associated with left axis deviation, this will be called left anterior hemiblock. And if left bundle is associated with right axis deviation, it will be called left posterior hemiblock. But in these cases, the block will be of the incomplete type, which is from 2.5 to 3 small squares.